Thank you very much. Ooh. Hello, Vikings. I'm not sure if this is on now, is it? We're good? Hello. Cool. Yeah. My name is Nicholas. And I'm Fabrice. And we're going to talk about pagination today. Um, but first, can we, uh, we also have this like, kind of good looking picture. Come on. There we go. Here we are. <laughs> we're coming from uh, Stavanger, Norway, uh, where me and Fabrice met when we were studying at the University of Stavanger. Uh, we were both student assistants, helping students learn how to code. Uh, and in between classes, we were uh, brainstorming, trying to make the next big thing. Uh, yeah, what all students try to do. Our next big thing was K30, which is a digital agency that we uh, established together with some other friends. So we do uh, development, design, concepts, data science, the whole shebang. Cool. <laughs> but, okay, today we're here to talk about pagination. And the best way to do that is just to give you an example of how we met a uh, challenge and how we try to solve it. Uh, we have a client that has a portal. And um, in this portal, they have a page that shows uh, an overview of the employees. So we received a design like this. Uh, probably most of you have seen something like this before. Uh, we chose, of course, to use the, the material table to show it. So it just has names, emails, telephone numbers, just the normal thing. And you can see like there's 190 employees, so we're not thinking about um, efficiency or anything here. It's, it's not going to be a problem, right? Uh, wrong. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a little bit later, the customer gives us a phone call and is complaining that the performance on the website is really bad. Like, as soon as they try to view the employees, the entire page freezes. It's not working. What we find out is he recently uploaded 2,000 employees. And I mean, 2,000, that's not a lot either, but that was crippling the entire application. So, Fabrice, maybe you could uh, walk us through a little bit what. Um, how we troubleshoot this? And yeah, so basically as a developer, I'm like thinking, oh, not pretty much optimization, I don't know what it is. So I'm thinking maybe the payload is too big, maybe the browser can't handle passing it. Uh, maybe there's just too much computation happening in there. But it turns out it's just a combination of the sheer amount of DOM nodes being created, so 2,000 plus nodes, and maybe some pipes running inside of each element. And that just, yeah, crippled the whole application. And uh, Wait a minute, so you're telling me that our solution to this problem would be rendering fewer nodes? Uh, duh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we went looking for a solution, and um, we ended up uh, with the Material Angular uh, paginator. And this is just a component you put into your template, uh, below or above uh, your list or table, and uh, it gives you controls to move uh, forward and ahead uh, forward and back uh, in your data, and you can uh, you can uh, tell it how many items to show on the page. Okay, so this is very simple. Uh, like you saw, you saw an example application earlier, very simplified. Uh, we just had a normal array. So could you maybe like walk us through if you have a table that is being uh, iterated over a normal array? How how would you implement the, the page generator then? Yeah, sure, Nick. Here you go. Yeah, so. Uh, get material into your project, uh, which I assume most of you already know how to do. Include the mat paginator module into your project and uh, add the mat paginator, as I said before, to your template. In this case, we're just passing in 10, and which means 10 elements are going to be rendered on the page. And next up, uh, in this case, we have an array. Uh, of uh, persons, uh, person interface, and uh, we suggest uh, using the mat table data source instead of the array. So in this case, you just instantiate a new instance of it, pass the array into it. And Hold on, uh, wait, wait. What? I've read the documentation for uh, the paginator, and it says that you can use a normal array too. You don't have to do like mat table data source with that too. But would we do that? Sure, if you want to spend like 10 years into, on doing this. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, you can use an array. Uh, but then you would have to supply your own uh, slicing of the data. Uh, when, when it asks you, give me this page, you're going to figure out how to get that page. And the math table data source already does that for you. Cool. All right, so we got the, the template, uh, or the component in the template. So now we need to link the, just the, what's it called? The component with the, the TypeScript file. 
So basically, what we're going to do first is, uh, of course, everybody here has used view child. We're going to get a reference to the, the component. Uh, and yeah, we'll get the patient variable then into the, into the TypeScript then. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, it's important here, uh, use the hook ng on init, uh, ng on uh, after view init, sorry, thank you. <laughs> Uh, because we want the component to load first in the template before you can actually can get a reference to it on the, in the TypeScript file. Yeah, and then Next. after this, what happens? Yeah, that's basically it. So now you've got a reference, and boom, great success. That's actually how easy it is to implement the, the paginator. All it gives you is controls over how many elements are being showed in the table at once. And the data is still being loaded, all of it, in the background. It's, like, it's just 2,000 rows in our case, and still uh, it's very efficient. All right, perfect. To recap? Yeah, recap. Here it is. Six steps. And it's including the, we expect that you already have material in your project when you start. Um, yeah. And then just show a difference between the before after code. This is how simple it was. That's the before. We have an array and now uh, implement it with a page And right. of course, this is the simplest version. Uh, there are different ways. We had some more filtering and uh, uh, other add-ons actually for our table. Yep. And speaking of, Vomangen här talar dansk. Yeah, många. Hur många här pratar svenska? Yes. Och kvar är det som talar isländsk? Islandingar? Okej, nu börjar. Så jag kommer bygga par franseisi. Oui, nu har jag på någon gäck i Sverige. Ja. Okej, så internationalisation is very important for our applications. Uh, so the paginator also has some built-in uh, tooltips. When you hover the buttons, you'll get the different names, and we had a little bit of trouble getting that going first. Yeah, lots of trouble. We actually had to put this issue on ice for like, <laughs> I don't know, two months because we couldn't figure it out. But then uh, one day I was lucky, I was checking my GitHub, like the usual daily ritual, and uh, somebody answered my issue. And uh, we're going to show you the solution to adding uh, translations to, your, to the paginator. So basically, this involves uh, extending the mat paginator Intel. I don't know how you pronounce that, Intel. And um, you, over, you override the get paginator Intel uh, function. And in this case, I'm just using an ob observable. Uh, in our application, we use uh, ngx translate. And you imagine using the translate serv service for this. And then once you subscribe, you get a translation. You just query for the keys. And then you call this dot changes dot next. And we got, <laughs> well, not yet. Oh, and the true. last thing you have to do is you have to tell the uh, Angular injector that each time I ask for matpaginator Intel, give pass in my implementation. And after that, you're that done. Works. So yeah, we made a little uh, um, repository for this where we yeah you. Recommend that you go in and just fool around a little bit with it. It has uh, several branches that before and after, and you can test how easy it is to implement the solution. All right, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy your NG Vikings. Thanks.